Hello and welcome to another film and testing video on my Tech One YouTube channel. What I have here is a spool of nylon by YX Polyer and they have the store on Amazon and on that page I saw very interesting specifications. Uh, the most important is that it is easy for printing with this uh, warp free technology and it doesn't have a carbon fiber so it can be printed with the uh, regular brass nozzle too but they have the warning that we have to dry it for hours on 60 degrees celsius for the start i would like to see more like specifications out of the box uh, maybe i'll dry it one hour but definitely the printing will be from the filament dryer too i'm not sure on which printer and build surface uh, should i try probably it will be a mark 3s uh, and i will try with the satin sheet using the glue stick on it i'm just following the prusa's uh, material guide table for this I'm not sure about other print settings because I can see different values. On the box it has the print temperature between 220 and 280 degrees Celsius, but on the website it has between 230 and 260 degrees Celsius. Well, maybe I will start with temperature towers from 280, but down to 240 I'm not going lower with, for the nylon filaments. And uh, no information, so it requires uh, enclosure properly, it does, so I will use one and uh, for the bed yes between 80 and 100 degrees celsius well probably i will start with 90 but a uh, glue stick should help um, not always to get a better adhesion to the bed but to prevent that it will stick too good so it is some kind of separation layer but let's see what's in the box the packaging is good it is vacuum packaging and there is some desiccant inside and this bag is resealable so after the printing i can place it back with some desiccant inside and i can close it Small correction because I can see there is some air inside and maybe it was vacuum packaged but uh, the air leaked inside. Uh, I can see these holes for the locking end of the filament are a little bit too close and we have only on two sides and the same specifications uh, we can see here like on the box. So the print temperature between 220 and 280 degrees Celsius. It is nice that this bag is resealable but the storing of the nylon I take very seriously so probably I will store it later in some kind of vacuum bags uh, but uh, this bag I will use with some PLA filament. The same information we have on the both sides of the spool. Unfortunately no information is what is the weight of the empty spool and it would be good to see some kind of scale here how much filament we have on the spool in grams or in meters. The start is nice, so it looks like it sticks good because all those letters of the first layer stick correctly. Soon I will see if that one hour of drying before the first print was enough, if I will have some stringings. Anyway, I don't have those crack sounds, you know, boiling of the micro water drops, so this is the promising start. There is some minimal stringing on 280 degrees Celsius and it almost disappears on 260 degrees Celsius. Nice printing the last element on 240 degrees Celsius and the temperature inside the enclosure is uh, 42 degrees Celsius. Only now I notice, I'm not sure is it visible on screen too, but on one side that leg lifts up a little bit, so it is not really zero warping technology. The bridging looks nice even with the 10% cooling only. Printing is finished few seconds ago and immediately I want to check the bed adhesion. Oh, it could be better. Now considering how weak was the bed adhesion, this is a great temperature tower because that warping was very minimally. If I could sew a little bit uh, to have a better bed adhesion, in that case uh, this uh, printing wouldn't be a problem. Perfect overhang and a bridging even with only 10% of cooling, but I know that I will have problems with my test objects because they are completely solid and this is much harder to print if the material tends to warp. I decided to print test objects in two groups. Uh, you can see I raised the bed temperature to 105 degrees Celsius. I hope it will be enough. And also I used the brim which is already printed so the first layer looks okay. Current Z coordinate is 4.2 millimeters and this means most of the test objects is printed and uh, each of them is perfectly striped. So this is very promising. Last two objects in this group for the layer adhesion test. Printing is finished a few seconds ago. The bed adhesion check immediately. Oh, way better now. Oh. Definitely I have to wait until it cools down, but now the bed adhesion is great. Definitely bigger bed temperature and the brim helps. The bed cooled down. Hmm. 
it almost sticks too good but it is removable and I'm not worrying because I have a separation layer which is this glue this is the second group of the objects and uh, looks okay so far I'm using the same settings the progress is good uh, it will be finished in um, 15 minutes printing is finished a few seconds ago I can see a little bit more stringing but uh, nothing special and the objects are perfectly striped there are no signs of the warping I have to wait until the bed cools down and then with the flexing of the bed I can remove the objects Even from this cart, I can feel that this is much stronger material than I usually test on this channel. This is GT2 timing belt and I did some experiments earlier with it but from TPU material. And I got several suggestions to try it from the nylon because what we need here is the flexibility and not the elasticity. I did later but from carbon fiber version but that was too rigid and now I'm curious if uh, this version will be better. Printed it 16 minutes, I should wait until the bed cools down, but I'm very curious. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is flexible, I can see that, uh, but uh, this is a maximum I can bend it without uh, breaking it. So if the diameter of the pulley is big enough, in that case it may work, uh, but uh, yes, TPO is more flexible material. I already mentioned after the printing, it immediately goes into the vacuum bag with some desiccant inside. And that filament is locked and actually for the nylon uh, this small distance is enough. For the PLA it wouldn't be enough because it is a little bit uh, more brittle material. About these objects, uh, before I start with mechanical testing I will wait at least one week because the nylon absorbed moisture, not only the filament but also these objects too. And after one week it will be closer to that stable state and I will get more realistic results. And now after one week I can start the mechanical testing. These test objects were stored on open air in room temperature at approximately 50% relative humidity. The tensile are pulling test. These test objects are printed in horizontal position. A very interesting break and uh, thanks to the specification of the nylon it is flexible so it started with prolongation and then actually it failed uh, between the layers and that's why we have this break. But let's check the layer adhesion. Layer adhesion test, these test objects are printed in vertical position. <laughs> I didn't want to use the chain hoist here because usually the layer adhesion is not so strong I can easily pull it with my weight. But yes, this was very strong. And look at this irregular break surface. If I wouldn't know the numbers, even then I could immediately tell that this has a strong layer adhesion. For comparison, this is how it breaks between the layers. Two-sided shear stress and the diameter of this test object is 5 mm. Shared correctly in C parts on those two cross-section areas and for the filling it was very strong. The torque or twist test, the diameter of this test object is 6 mm and one side goes into the device and the other to the torque meter and I want to record the deformation under 90 degree angle 0.6 and the maximum load 1.3 Nm and very interesting material look at these deformations after 3.5 rotations almost like some flexible TP materials and this is my 3 point bending test with distance between supports of uh, 50 mm and I want to measure the deformation after 130 and 60 seconds. Here you can see these loads and they will be placed one by one. This is a deformation under 1.25 kg, 2.5 kg, 5 kg and it failed under 10 kg. And this is its permanent deformation after this test. I did the impact tester with a half kilogram hammer and I'm curious how brittle is this material but I believe that nylon should perform very good in this test. Why exfoliate nylon? Opa! Ho ho ho! This is the second time I experienced this. I think the first one was with the uh, Eastern ABS Plus and this is incredible. Something what I expected but I didn't know that it will not break at all. Impressive. <laughs> I cannot see even the deformation on it. 
just to record the zero position so I can calculate the energy, or at least the maximal energy which I can measure with this equipment. What you saw a few seconds ago was this, 307 millimeters for the calculating of max energy, but later when I packed my equipment, just for curiosity, I lifted the hammer to 400 millimeters and I used the same test objects and it survived that impact too. This is the temperature test in the oven with the M10 nut as a small load and I want to record the temperature of the first deformation and I will follow the temperature with this cooking thermometer. And this is timeless speed up video of approximately 15 minutes. And nothing happened until almost 180 degrees Celsius when I noticed first deformations on this test object. And it starts with the deformation very suddenly. So I stopped the experiment on 200 degrees Celsius. And as you can see, the object completely deformed and it was uh, very soft after this test. I'm not sure where it starts with the softening, but you saw it uh, deforms very suddenly on approximately 180 degrees Celsius. And I'm a regular creep test to measure the deformation under the constant load, which will be 1.25 kilograms. And I'm locking the position here and measuring the distance between two reference surfaces, 26.35. And I was expecting something similar with nylons because I know that they are creeps and this is the deformation after one day, after two days, three days, four, and a fifth the way it fell down. And this is how it looks like now. The video is almost finished, but then I got the idea to test this uh, pure nylon powder coated sheet by Prusa. Theoretically it is designed for nylon filaments, but I'm not sure if it will work with any nylon or only with the plus cement. So let's replace the sheets. And this PVA based glue is very easy to wash under the tap with the water. It's a little bit hard to see, but the first layer is down and it looks okay. Printing is finished a few seconds ago and immediately I want to check the bed adhesion because here I don't have uh, to use any other adhesive or, or glue stick. Ah, it's not too strong, but it was there. From the texture on the bottom surface, I can see that the live Z or Z offset was set correctly, so I couldn't go deeper into the print surface. This means that if I want to use this sheet, in that case, I have to use the glue stick too. And I can see some warping on this printed object because of this weaker bed adhesion. Let's repeat the 10 side test with horizontally printed objects. Again, I can see some prolongation before the break, and for these two objects, the maximum load was very similar, but a little bit bigger from those with the hole. And these two holders are CNC machined by PCBWay. And now let's analyze the results in this Excel table, which you can download from my website. And as always, for the Patreon supporters, I'm preparing this uh, line to the summary table, so they can easily compare these results with uh, those which I did earlier. Let's start with the creep test. So this is that uh, this is between two reference surfaces and uh, what we need is actually the difference between two days and that's what we can see here in this table or presented on this graph. And the tendency is quite obvious. So I know that nylon creeps, I experienced this with every nylon I tested so far and approximately on the second day it was significantly reduced but on fifth day the weight fell down. The tensile test and the layer adhesion test and this is very interesting uh, result and uh, first I did the testing with the, these two objects with the hole inside and uh, incredible that first time I experienced that uh, layer adhesion vertically printed object was stronger. Now the reason for this is very strong layer adhesion and when it's uh, pulled the line separates and we have two smaller cross section areas and then one of them breaks earlier and that's why we have here this lower value. And uh, with these test objects, as you can see, they are holded outside on this surface and uh, it has bigger brake load from that reason because the, it cannot separate so easy. Usually if the test object breaks on a smaller cross-section area correctly, in that case I have same results with these two test objects. The shear stress, uh, here I enter some average PLA, PTG and ABS, but uh, this is um, acceptable results or so no special 
values here and now that bending uh, here we can see the deformation on these loads after 30 seconds but more important is this table here where I measured the deformation after 1, 30 and 60 seconds for these loads and uh, on 10 kilograms it completely failed, deformed and uh, even on 1.25 kilogram we can see some creeping in the first 30 seconds and then it stabilized on 2.5 kilogram I can see that it continues deformation even after 30 seconds and especially on the 5 kilograms so keep this in mind because uh, this nylon don't like uh, too big constant loads on it the torque or twist test, uh, nothing special here, 0.6 Nm on 90 degree rotation, but what is interesting that uh, I could make uh, 3.5 turns before it completely failed. And the impact test where this material really shines, and as I mentioned that uh, I uh, raised the hammer later to 400 mm and even then it didn't broke after first testing I use the same test object so here you can see that uh, it is much stronger even from the ABS and the temperature test uh, another test where this uh, shines actually and uh, I could notice only the deformation 182 degrees Celsius this is really incredible of course I'm not sure when it starts with the softening because uh, on their website they uh, suggest uh, to use it up to 120 degrees Celsius but even then this is very incredible and this is always comparable because uh, these are results from my earlier testing using the same method and what is very nice here that uh, actually the price is not so big so maybe like average PTG or something like that usually I know nylons or polycarbonate filament starts with uh, $50 per kilogram this nylon was very present surprise as you can see from results it is very strong material but differently strong compared to the regular ABS on one side it don't like uh, to be constant loads on it because it creeps and you shouldn't build I don't know, parts for CD printer or, or Voron uh, from nylon. But interesting to see how it slowly gets back its original shape. This is the test object from my creep test. On the other side, uh, it has a great uh, impact strength. <laughs> this test object survived even two attempts of the breaking. Great temperature resistance, and in this case, fantastic layer tension. One more advantage compared to the ABS, and uh, this is not tested on this channel, but very often I can read that a nylon is resistant to most of the solvents. One quick example, ABS cannot have contact with the acetone. Well, actually it can, with the acetone vapor you can smooth the surface, but I still have to educate myself from this aspect. If you have some suggestions for some good article, please write me down in the comments. About the printability, that uh, zero warping technology is not completely zero, but uh, this is easier for printing compared to the, any other regular nylon uh, filament I tested on this channel without carbon fibers. In my experience, those carbon fibers don't really help with the strength, but usually they stabilize the printing so it is easier for printing. But don't forget, in that case, uh, you need a harder nozzle. And of course, the very important is to solve somehow to have a good bed adhesion. Properly, in most cases, you have to use some kind of uh, adhesive uh, material. In my case, the glue stick worked, but properly there are different sprays for this and similar. And uh, if you are printing nylon, uh, write me down what is your method for the bed adhesion, what are you using for the build surface and maybe for the adhesive material. And if you have any other suggestions, you know, few lines in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy printing.